Hey guys and welcome back to the YouTube video. In this video, I will show you how I made a convolution in my network or CNN that can classify Bangla numbers. Now, if you don't know what Bangla numbers are, uh, they are basically like uh, Bangla is like an English, Indian language, uh, like and the numbers are really different from English numbers. Uh, the thing with Bangla numbers is is that they are like pretty complex. If you have a look at it, of uh, course, uh, they are uh, like uh, they have a lot of angles in them, and they are really uh, like the shape of a Bangla number is, is pretty like not straight. Like, if even if you write something like a two, it only has three angles in it. If you have a closer look, so I thought that if I would just use a fully connected neural network, then it wouldn't just provide me a really high accuracy. Uh, so I went with some convolutions. Uh, you can add dropouts to these convolutions, but I did not add a dropout because uh, the model is not overfit because I then evaluated it on the testing images, which I will get to later on. And it actually worked very nice. So, uh, like, it's not a overfit uh, model, and it's pretty good. So, uh, this is the entire model. Like, I'm not gonna get it get to it right now. I will show it to you, but afterwards. And if you don't know what a convolutionary neural network or CNN is, uh, go check out my video where I explain to you all the math behind the CNN. Um, if you want to know more about neural networks, I have like several videos on my channel now. I will be posting more very soon. Uh, yeah. And also comment down below if you want me to make the same neural network but in the form of an RNN. I forgot the full form of an RNN but yeah. Alright, so uh, this is I will drop the link for this in the description box down below. So you can see first the standard imports. Uh, I just uh, disabled the progress bar. This is all is just I got some information on the data set. Then I just looked at the data and then split it because we cannot test the data, compute on the data it's actually see. And then we just have a look at some examples that uh, are there, uh, just some like images. You can also have a look at the testing images, it does not really matter. I'm just gonna have a look at the training images just because I like to do that. Then I just use these two list comprehensions, convert them to a numpy array and a grayscale image. Uh, this is basically converts it to grayscale because zero will represent that and like no dimension to it. Zero. Then I just got the shape of the data. Now here's the thing: as I'm dealing with a convolution, now this is the thing that you should really like think about when you're dealing with a convolutionary neural network. Uh, I'm not told about this in the last video because it's like you can only explain to it when you're doing it practically. But whenever you are dealing with a convolutionary neural network, you should have an end time of four or above, like four. Uh, if you are thinking of what a convolution uh, end number 4 is, it stands for number of dimensions. So, if you have like the data that you are using, should have at least 4 dimensions. Now, that's kind of, uh, I would say, different from the normal data that we get. The normal data that we deal with uh, has like max to max 3 dimensions. It's like uh, the 32 by 32 by 1, like the, the uh, like the RGB and the height width, so that's something. But when you are dealing with a convolution, you need to have at least four dimensions. So we need to reshape our data. But we can't just put anything like over here. When I'm reshaping it, like these numbers, five thousand and thousand, are not arbitrary. Uh, they are like actually well thought out. And if you just add like any number in here, it, it's just gonna throw you an error. You should be knowing the shape of the data. And only then you can reshape it. So what I do is I just add this 5000 and 1000 along with the 32 by 32 and 1. So if you do not perform these two steps, it's going to throw you an error called like expected and minimum end of 4, part and end of 3. And it's not going to make you a con it's not going to run the convolutionary neural network. And that's like kind of a problem because when you actually go out of the market, when you're actually going to be making some uh, full scale commercial neural networks, you are not going to be using uh, like fully connected neural networks because they are not that easy to deal with and also they are not that accurate. 
do a lot of things. Converted them to floats. Pretty simple. Now let me actually sh explain you the shape a bit better. So when I just run the cell, you can see I get this shape. 5000 uh, by 32 by 32 by 1. So this is the shape we need to put inside over here. Now this is a very important step and whenever you are dealing with any convolutional neural network, uh, you need to do perform this step. Like, if you do not perform this step, uh, your convolutional neural network will not work. Uh, so yeah, just uh, do not forget that step, it's very important. If you know the shape of your data, uh, no need to perform this step, but usually you do not know what this number is, you just know what this number is. Yeah, so if you don't even know what any of these numbers are, just perform this step or let's just search on the TensorFlow website if you are using a TensorFlow data set. Or you will obviously need to just do this train images not shape, test images not shape. Labels do not have a shape, so you don't need to do that. Then just divide it by 255 because it's RGB is so a 255. The class themes uh, for the predictions, and this is the important part the entire model. So you can see, I gone with the convolutionary neural network approach. Uh, so I have like one convolu the first convolutionary layer as uh, 64, like as the uh, filter as like the kernel size of 64, and the filters are three, so three by three. So in a kernel size of 64, I'm putting a three by three filter and then doing it. Activation of ReLU. Now, if you don't understand how ReLU works, uh, it like there's a lot of calculus and linear algebra behind ReLU. I'll just search the formula on how ReLU works. Actually, I think I will be able to show you how ReLU works. I was having a look at it over here. So you can see. Uh, I'm sorry. I was having a look at the optimizers. You can just search how an activation ReLU works. Uh, I'm planning to do a video on like that, uh, like. Not exactly calculus, but just explain you how all of these activations, like what is the formula, what is the math behind all of these activations. ReLU, input shape 32 by 32 by 1. Here's the thing when we had like converted the shape above and then we reshaped it, when we're doing it down below, we really don't need to pass in 5000, like it's not needed. So I just skipped it. Then I just made a little dense layer, just like this too. Uh, add a little connection between all of these convolutions. I just like to do that. Then flatten layer. Usually we add it just to you know flatten out the dimensions of the data. This is obviously is the output layer with the softmax activation. Again, if you don't know how the softmax activation works, search it out. Uh, I'll, I'm doing a video on it like how it about Optimize of Adam. Let me actually show you to you how it works. So this is from this website called dlogy.com so check it out i think i will also keep the link for this in the description but i think i will so adam is adam is prop plus moment so it's like the there's this optimizer called adam is prop if you don't know so you can see this is the all of the optimizers so you got sgd momentum nag adgrad adelta and adam is prop so like i know you won't actually understand what that is but let me actually show it to you where rms prop is rms prop was somewhere over here only, but uh, this is momentum so momentum takes two post gradients now oh, this is a bit complex so i'm not gonna like do all of that but yeah so this is rms prop optimizer so you can just try it out so that's that now Loss of space, categorical cross entropy. Uh, I tried out binary, I tried out categorical, nothing worked. So I went with this. Matrix accuracy, as always, because we need to improve it. Train images, train labels, epochs 5, batch size 2. Uh, I went with a very low batch size because uh, I just want a good network. It's just 5 epochs, we can't do it with that much. Uh, now, here's the thing. Let me actually run the code and actually let me just show you something. So when I'm running this, you can see I'm like on a really high accuracy like in the first 86% accuracy, that's pretty good. Let me actually show you something which is very important when you are dealing with the neural networks. It's actually the most important step. Like forget all of this, 
we need to know what this step is. So just keep that in mind. So let me actually show it to you. So you can see when I am running this network, we are getting a super high accuracy of 98%, a really low loss, and like even the model runs pretty fast. So you might be saying that's a win-win for me. I'm having a high accuracy, but let me tell you, uh, the hard truth about this is it does not really matter because your computer is like. Basically, it's just testing itself on the data that is actually seen. Like, it's just that like uh, I I am giving some I am like I am giving some one page to read it, and like I am just like they're told that hey, write this open book test on all of this, and everything is just inside of it. Obviously, I am going to get everything right. I am not even going to get a single question wrong. But if I, we are never testing the computer on the test images. So that's why we need to do this step to actually have a look at what the computer can do when it's shown data like outside. So you can see it says 95% accuracy. Now, 95% is very good. So I just stopped over there. I didn't really add a lot of more convolutions or dense layers or dropout layers, but I gave it an accuracy of 95%. Now, here's the thing a lot of you guys would be like, oh, I can get this up and you will just run like. Two more convolutions to this, like add a dropout layer, add like do all of that. Uh, I wouldn't really agree with that. A lot of the times, like I, this has actually happened to me in one of my neural networks. I had actually gone ahead and just made a crazy neural network, like it was like really it was very huge and deep neural network. It was not at all like superficial. It actually had tons and tons of nodes and activations and all of that it was a pretty complex network but it turned out that i would i was getting like a really accuracy of like 98 99 percent sometimes in like touch the one mark but like when i would evaluate the model uh it, it would like kind of do bad uh the reason being sometimes the model is like getting like pampered uh the reason being if we just give it so many filters what the model will do is like it, it will like it will like become like a bookworm you can just memorize things uh, which are given to it like which are like directly fed to it so when you would evaluate the model when you would actually test it on the real data it wouldn't work so it's literally like uh, this is the main step that you need to do because whatever accuracy you get over here does not really matter it's just it's like a pre-test the main test is this one as long as you can get this accuracy real good like i am literally telling if you get a zero percent accuracy over here and you get a hundred percent accuracy over here do not pay attention to this one. obviously that will never happen usually the evaluation accuracy is less than the uh training accuracy so just keep that in mind so don't think that if you get a bad accuracy on this one you're gonna get a good accuracy over here now i didn't really go and do the matplotlib predictions i just got it in the form of the numbers and you can just compare it how the predictions are you can see the model is pretty good uh you can just put through it do it through matplotlib i decided to not do it I, you know it's just like who like it's not really important like you have already made the neural network so that's why uh, let me just have a quick check so now here's the thing uh why did I go with like these convolutions? Uh, what I did was I first obviously we need to give it a good amount of convolutions like when you are dealing with a convolution in your network uh, and like you need to give it like a healthy amount of convolutions for the first time when you are doing de dealing with it. Now I didn't really add any max pooling to these convolutions uh, I just threw the convolutions I didn't really add any max pooling or global average pooling because uh, I just figured out that like the network would just get a bit too complex for that and like the data I'm dealing with right now does not really require that amount of complexity. Yeah, if the network would have been like a really huge data set which would have been required that much of complexity, yeah, I would surely be adding a lot of layers. And I will probably be making some custom layers too. And by the way, yeah, you can make custom layers in Keras. Like there's this, you can use classes to do that. I won't really make a tutorial on that pretty soon because it's pretty complicated. 
or you can just google uh like the code required to make a custom layer uh, that's that's pretty good and a lot of data scientists usually prefer that because uh, they want it to match their specific needs i went with a convolution with uh, 64 corner size 3 filters obviously don't know check out my video made two convolutions like that just check it out stay consistent then just added a dense layer just to connect the things up a little bit then just added a convolution like 32 let's actually try and get the small to a little bit of a high accuracy i'm just gonna add chaos dot layers dot con with 2d 32 by 3 and the activation of value also guys if i uh, like i post this video like tomorrow or day after tomorrow there might be a chance you might be seeing a little bit of a change in this like collab uh, file cause I might miss it mess with this but I'm not sure so don't fear about that let's actually see if we can get it to a higher accuracy let's just try it out and I feel like we are gonna get a hundred percent accuracy I feel like that I'm not sure so let's wait for it Alright, the last epoch, yeah, we're just turning at a decent 97, 98.40, alright, this is the real test, I didn't really make that much of a change, <laughs> uh, but I think it just increased it by like point something, so not much of a change, but, you know what, like, I can work with it, like, I can't increase the heat box to 7, but I, I'm gonna stay with this, like, I don't wanna overfit it. I could add a dropout layer, but I feel like this is doing fairly nicely, and it's not even overfitted, like, I don't know how. So, this model is not overfit. A, a lot of models are usually, like, they do really good on the training gear and horribly on the testing gear. So, yeah. So, I hope you guys like this neural network, like, uh, Till now, all of the neural network tutorials I've made are all using dense layers or fully connected neural networks, uh, which are good, but obviously not the best. So, hope you guys like this. So, until the next time we meet. So, that's it for today, guys. I'm sorry for that. Uh, so, that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like and subscribe to the channel. And until the next time we meet, bye-bye.